G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for the Round 17 tips and predictions. Uh, I have been, well I've had Lady COVID balls deep in me this week, you can probably tell by my voice. Uh, so I've been a bit under the weather, I did intend to get this video up earlier. Um, but it's been a rough three or four days to be completely honest with you. I don't know how it happened. I don't I don't have a social life uh, This weekend I happen to go to Drewsy's 21st and of course wake up Monday morning test positive to a rat So it's been pretty gross uh, I think Drewsy made the suggestion that on his story that I gave him COVID that is that is not true He was just extremely hungover from his 21st um, he does not have COVID, didn't get it from me, so not taking the blame for that one. But I'm all good, yeah, just feeling feeling a bit gross. Um, to be honest with you, it's kind of like, it's probably not the worst flu that I've ever had, to put it in perspective, but it's been up there. It's been pretty bad, like fevers, body aches, um, just real gross stuff. But anyway, feeling better today, so hopefully I don't have a downturn and I'm right to re-enter society next Monday. Before we get into it, I uh, kind of just want to acknowledge all the uh, all the big flutter support on the channel. Uh, the last video I did where I sort of talked about why I wasn't uploading that much and where my head was at generally. And uh, yeah, it was just really, really nice to see lots of really heartfelt comments uh, in the comment section just sort of showing support. And um, it does make me feel a little bit embarrassed to be honest. I mean, there's been a few instances over the last six months where I've probably made the suggestion on the channel that I was thinking about hanging up the boots and each time there's been a flood of support and, and, and praise as well and I didn't want to have this sort of pattern where I would sort of, you know, dangle the prospect of me quitting uh, only to get people's praise. I hope it doesn't come across that way. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you because a lot of the comments as well were, um, there was a lot of thought in them as well. So really, really appreciate it. Definitely gave me a boost. I haven't made any decisions yet. Uh, I mean, I'm still here. I'm still making this video today. Um, so the dream's not completely dead in the water. Um, but I'm just going to try and take it one video at a time. And some, some weeks I just probably won't feel like uploading. So, uh, but we'll see. I'll give it a red hot crack from here. Someone did comment as well on the last video saying, um, yeah, just because the Eagles are shit, now I want to quit suddenly. Yeah, I, I did laugh at that one. And to be honest, I'm surprised it hasn't come up more often, to be honest. But I promise you it's not true. Um, the Eagles sucking is just... Uh, just kind of irrelevant. If, any, if anything, it actually gives me more to talk about on the channel. So, yeah. But anyway, we're here to give you um, the, the footy tips, obviously, for round 17. Obviously, I have not been able to acknowledge all the weekly winners of recent yet, but I'm going to do that in today's video. We'll take a look, first of all, at how uh, I'm going in the footy tipping comp. I'm 112th. Uh, I had a couple of good weeks there. Um, I'd still love to get back to that top 100, but it's pretty competitive. You guys are pretty damn good. Uh, but the weekly winner from last week was someone called Brett Clement, the only person to pick a perfect nine. So well done, Brett. And the overall leader is Hendog, 101, if I'm not mistaken. And looking at the fantasy competition, I had a pretty good week this week. I'm 102nd. Um, that, that's less impressive because there's far less people in fantasy, but I, I just suck at it. Uh, but James English with his team Shuckers uh, had an incredible week of 2480. I don't think that was even the top score last week. I think everyone did pretty well, but still leads the comp with an average of 2156. So consistently good over the last two years, James. Well done. And finally, I'll give a shout out to the sponsor of the channel, manscaped.com, who incredibly have shown the faith and want to extend a little bit longer with me. So do go check out their website, manscaped.com. They do have great products. It's only building momentum. Uh, and you can get 20% off their awesome products with the code TRUEFOOTY20. You're probably aware of them by now. They have the Lawn Mower 4.0, the actual body hair trimmer, and they have a range of other male grooming products to round out your grooming routine, such as a moisturizer, deodorizer, boxes, and nose and ear hair trimmers as well. Jeez, you can tell by my voice I'm struggling. But they're a great sponsor, a great business with uh, really good products as well. So go check them out and use our discount code. All right, so we'll return to the normal format of AFL Squiggle Predictor where I punch in my tip and then, gross, and then it uh, updates the ladder for me as well. Quick look at the ladder because it's been a while since we've done this. Uh, Melbourne, Geelong, and Brisbane, that's a very familiar top three, very similar to last year. It's starting to resemble, you know, the form that we kind of expected this year. And of course, Fremantle in fourth spot. I still think Fremantle are a very good team and uh, arguably worthy of that second spot. Um, but we've got our top four there, Carlton, Collingwood. Collingwood's not surprised in terms of the way they've played, but obviously, you know, five weeks ago, they didn't look anywhere near the top four, and now they're just uh, a game outside of the top four, which is awesome. Probably got that top 12 teams there as competing for finals there with Port Adelaide in 12th. Still a sneaky chance to make it. I think they're potentially good enough, although obviously they're up against it to some extent, and the bottom four is looking... Uh, 
Probably not cemented. Certainly West Coast and North won't leave that bottom two, I wouldn't think. But Essendon and Hawthorne now uh, at the third and fourth last spots, making up that bottom four. And Adelaide and GWS kind of in that no man's land. Particularly GWS, I think Adelaide are clearly rebuilding. I don't know, don't know what GWS would describe their season as. But uh, anyway, we'll get into the round ahead. So this is a big fixture. This game will actually be on today. So I'm hoping I get this video out uh, early enough for you to watch it before the game, but Geelong and Melbourne at Cardinia Park. This is a tough one because Geelong have been in great form. They've won, you know, a heap of games on the trot and, um, you know, looking pretty resilient at the moment. Obviously, Tom Stewart's going to be missing for four weeks. He's a really important part to their back six, but I think they've proven in the past they can sort of get on all right without some key players. They're just a good team with a good system. Melbourne, on the other hand, have sort of regained a bit of form, annihilating Brisbane and then beating Adelaide in Adelaide um, to sit back on top spot, and a few of those teams in that sort of contention for top four have been dropping games lately other than Geelong. So, this is a tough one, though, because there's not a lot of exposed form between these two sides at GMHBA. I think the last two times they played there, Melbourne came down from, from 40 points down uh, to beat them in the uh, was it the last game of last year. And uh, the time before that, I think Tui kicked a goal after the siren. That would have been back in 2018. I don't know if they've played otherwise since then. But either way, since Melbourne have been good and this version of Melbourne, there's not a lot to go off. And I think Melbourne are the better team. So I think... You could justifiably tip Geelong here, but I'm going to say Melbourne lift and rise to the occasion and win a thriller by oh, six points. Hope it's a good game. Sydney then play the Western Bulldogs at the SCG. This is a tough one where uh, Sydney's been the better team this year. They currently sit eighth on the ladder that I've got there, and the Bulldogs sit 10th. Earlier this year, the Dogs actually got up by 11 points in Melbourne. But I think on exposed form, Sydney's been better this year. But the Bulldogs are just capable of playing how you'd expect them to every now and then. Um, and the SCG doesn't seem to be a really strong home ground advantage for the Swans either. So this is a really 50-50 game for me. I think I'm going to go with the home side, Sydney. They kind of need to get their shit together. They're sitting in eighth. I don't think that's reflective of how good they can be. You can make the case for a few teams in that top eight. But I'll say Sydney win this by eight points, but oh, I could go either way. Collingwood play North Melbourne. This one's a little bit more simple. Uh, North haven't really given me any sort of reason to, to back them in. They've been deplorable. Their last performance was a 112-point loss against Geelong, which as tough a fixture as it is, uh, there's been really no linear improvement from North at all this year, uh, by contrast to, you know, West Coast, who were terrible as well, equally bad, if not worse at one point. There's been at least some improvement, whereas we haven't seen any signs from North. So they could bob up and show at any game, but I don't think I'm going to have any faith in them against Collingwood, who have been fantastic. One, I don't know, five or six in a row. Nick Rewalt's talking about them as a chance to win the flag. I mean, that's a tough ask for if they don't finish inside the top four, but their top brand footy is, you know, comparable to those top teams, I would argue. So Collingwood should win this comfortably. I'll tip them by 40 points. Gold Coast then play Richmond at uh, Metricon Stadium. This is a tough one. Again, they're all tough ones, especially when you're not that good at tipping like me. Uh, but Gold Coast have been reliable this year. They're currently sitting in 11th spot, 7 wins and 8 losses. They're not too far off their best ever season already, um, which is incredible. And Stuart Jew got rewarded with the contract extension, which is um, well and truly overdue. I'm out of practice, I'm sorry. Uh, but Richmond are a good team, so this is a this is going to be a really tough ask for the Gold Coast. If they win this, this will be a huge validation of how far they've come. And I think they've already proven that they've come a long way, but this would be a big notch on the bedpost, as it were. Uh, Richmond sort of staved off a, a pretty spirited West Coast last week. Um, admittedly, you know, without a couple of soldiers, that Presti is still out, and... Um, yeah, obviously they're not a strong clearance side and that even the game up a little bit, but they're still a very, very powerful side. So as good as Gold Coast are, I think Richmond, I think, deserve some respect as well as generally being an outside contender, I think, at the moment. But now I've said that, they're probably going to embarrass me. So I'll say Richmond by 10 points. Next, we have St. Kilda versus Fremantle. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. So St. Kilda have been really up and down this year. Their worst form has been really bad. Their best form has been pretty damn good. Um, and, you know, obviously earlier this year, they've beaten Fremantle in Perth. Last week, they beat Carlton, who are a very tough team to beat on their day. I um, thought it was a pretty good game, although Carlton are again up and down as well. But I feel like, you know, if their worst form has just ended the Saints and they've sort of sprung back into action, there's reason to believe they should play well again this week, right? Fremantle, on the other hand, have been a little bit shaky after winning those big upset games. Um, lost to Carlton by five or so goals. Nearly got run over by Port in Perth, but you know ultimately got the four points, and that's all that matters. I think Fremantle are the better team here. 
That being said, the head-to-head is interesting. St Kilda beat them in Perth earlier this year, and they smashed them, I think, in Tasmania in the final round last year. And You could make the case that that doesn't mean anything now. It probably doesn't. But i got a funny feeling St Kilda is actually going to win this. And like I said, Fremantle, uh, in my power rankings, had them as the second-best team in the comp. I just think they might drop this game, to be honest, and then probably cruise home for the rest of the year and do well. But this is an upset win for me. I'm going to say St Kilda win this by nine points, and that is going to... Get a lot of hate comments for bias. I promise I'm not biased. Just a funny feeling I got this week. Port then played GWS. Uh, this game is 12th versus 13th, with some implication on the final eight, you'd think, because I think Port still have a sneaky chance, uh, and they have to win this to stay in the hunt, whereas GWS at five wins and 10 losses are pretty much out of it at the moment, even though they've played some improved football since they got a new coach. Uh, it's a pretty tough ask to go to Port and beat them. And Port were encouraging last week against Fremantle. And GWS got the points against Hawthorne, who currently sit in the bottom four. So overall, though, I think Port should win this at the home side. I think they've been better than GWS this year comfortably. So I'll say it's a four-goal win. Brisbane versus Essendon at the Gabba. Now, the Lions uh, had a couple of shaky weeks there. They lost to Melbourne and Fremantle. Uh, In particular, getting battered by Melbourne wasn't a great look, but I think they responded really well with a big win over the Dogs, who obviously beat them in Queensland last year. Uh, I think they don't stay down for too long, so I'm expecting a typical Brisbane performance in this game. Essendon are a tough one, really, where, again, they've been, you know, Pretty shit all year, let's be honest. The last three weeks has been pretty solid. They've beaten the Saints, uh, admittedly, who were in bad form. Uh, They've beaten Sydney in that time as well at the G. That was a thriller last week. Then they went to Perth and and lost to the Eagles. But again, I don't want to be an Eagles fan, but I just thought it was actually a reasonable display of football from both sides. So my point being, Essendon are improving and look better than the 16th place side at the moment. Will it be enough to topple Brisbane? Probably not. This is probably too much of an ask. But if they were playing someone around the mid-table this round, I'd be tempted to tip Essendon. So I think I think Brisbane have a knack for annihilating Essendon in Queensland. I feel like I feel like someone in the comments who can do some research to let me know if I'm completely making that up. Uh, but I have a memory of Brisbane putting them to the sword. So I think Brisbane will win a professional game by 30 points, but Essendon look like they're improving. Hawthorne versus Adelaide at Dockland Stadium. This is actually tricky because they're sort of similar teams that... 14th versus 15th, so a similar place on the ladder. Both kind of going through a rebuild phase, no doubt, and both have a reasonable gap between their best and worst. In fact, actually, Hawthorne's got the far bigger gap between their best and worst, and I would say Hawthorne's best should win this, but their worst could easily lose this by five goals. So by contrast, Adelaide actually now I think about it are a bit more consistent. They're, you know, they consistently show up to games. There's not too many performances where you're like, gee, Adelaide didn't show up at all in that game. It has happened. I think GWS earlier this year uh, was probably the one outlier there, but they've been dependable and solid. That being said, I just feel like Hawthorne are due to play well. It's been a little while. So I'm going to say Hawthorne get the job done in Melbourne by 17 points. And here we are for the biggest blockbuster of the round. Uh, I've got to stop making that joke about my own team. West Coast is hosting Carlton at Optus Stadium. West Coast have had a really improved three weeks, uh, it has to be said, considering how diabolical they were you know, a month ago um, to, to carry that form into against Geelong, um, push them all the way, put up a reasonable challenge against Richmond, who I rate as a really good side at the G. And then, of course, in between that, notching their second win of the year against Essendon. So I think West Coast have gotten out of their funk a little bit, playing with a bit more aggression and confidence, um, but still have a lot of work to do. And by contrast, Carlton are a tough one where their best football is arguably as good as anyone. It's probably up there for premiership quality, uh, but then they just have so many off weeks in between, including last week they got done by St Kilda. So they currently sit eighth uh, on my live ladder. So this is... I mean, you could say it's a must win because the top eight and top four race is so tight, and I think Carlton should be aiming for top four. I think they're good enough for that. Put it this way, Carlton are a better side. If both sides play well, Carlton win. West Coast are good enough to win if Carlton don't show up, but I'm not going to bet on that. So I'll say Carlton win this by 24 points, but I'm optimistic that my boys will put in a good performance. So there you have it. That is round 17 wrapped up for me. Uh, Top four remains unchanged, even with the Saints upsetting Fremantle there, and they still don't move into the top eight, which is interesting. And then the bottom four sees a little shift there with Hawthorne climbing over Adelaide, um, provided they beat them at Marvel Stadium this weekend. 
So let's just go back for a second. Let's say, hypothetically, West Coast win this game. I'm not interested in where West Coast will go. I'm just interested to see the difference between Carlton's position. So Carlton would be 8th if they lose and 5th if they win. So I uh, would have to say that that is a pretty important game for Carlton. Um, just sort of reinforcing that point there that there's not too many droppable games left if you're in that 4th to 10th range, to be honest. Anyways, guys, that is my crack at round 17. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, let me know, you know, what's the upset of the round. I usually do that, don't I? Uh, my upset of the round, I guess, would have to be St Kilda beating Freeman. I think that's a reasonable upset. And game of the round would have to be tonight, Geelong versus Melbourne at uh, GMHBA. I can't see it not being a good game, to be honest. It's hard to imagine either side getting a hold of the other, personally. But we'll see. But thanks, guys. Thanks for sticking through with the channel. Um, appreciate it. If you could subscribe to the channel, I know I haven't really given much reason to subscribe lately, but um, all support is much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.